behind the bar. My life is more than money and jewelry. My story's so crazy, dog. I said make a movie behind the bar. I went from playing sports to exotic whips. Ain't gotta tell me, dog. I know I'm the shit behind the bar. My life is more than money and jewelry. My story's so crazy, dog. I said make a movie behind the bar. I went from music exec to this podcast. Now I finally feel at home and left behind the bar. Yo, 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 microphone check, one, two, mic check, one, two, one, two. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ben Baller, not Ben Humble. Some of you know me as the Korean Burt Reynolds, but most of you guys know me as the Wash Lord, and this is another brand new episode of the number one unorthodox business podcast on the fucking planet, okay? Yes, the award-winning, the world-famous. We are a legit Top rank globally, top rank show. Okay, sorry that didn't come out the right way. You know what I'm saying? We do this the real deal. Okay, but we are in the top ten in 17 countries, and that is what you would call no cap. Your boy, the Korean John Cusack, is fresh back from my second home, San Francisco. Um, I'm a little under the weather. I'm on some Dayquil. I'm on some vitamin C. I'm on some elderberry. All that good shit. Um, I need to get my my shit right. Because we are a week away from the 15th annual George Lopez Charity Golf Classic. And I've been fucking training like crazy with my golf coach, Ron Del Barrio. I see motherfuckers saying, oh, this, that, blah, blah. I don't even fucking realize I got less than fucking 20 hours, okay, under the motherfucking clubs. Like, you guys are stupid. But um, it's coming along. And, and it's a great game. It's amazing. I'm hope I, I should be good by this week. Um, I don't feel like I'm destroyed. I just don't like the way I feel now. So I started to get ahead of it. I'm kind of worn down. San Francisco did kick my ass. And I do have a big week ahead of me. More uh, to kind of test the waters. Um, my Bathing Ape collaboration has been officially announced. Obviously, I gave you guys heads up way, way before the, you know, um, the actual official release date. And, you know, I don't know if my fans understand the magnitude of what Bape is to streetwear, to culture, to what it means in my life. You know what I'm saying? Just because it's been something that's been in and out of my life for, fuck, man, almost 30 years, right? Um, so the Bathing Ape private event is this Thursday, uh, April 28th. And um, if you are somebody who has bought expensive shit from me, from IF and Co., and you're interested, then send me a DM. Um Pretty much the private party is for people who want to look at the collection, which is going to be just for LA. New York will be different, and then Tokyo will be different. The full drop is going to happen on May 7th, and uh, Babe doesn't want me to announce that yet, but they don't know the podcast is a different thing. It's a different animal. Just letting you guys know there will be a you know clothing, light clothing for LA. There will be a very, very, very limited clothing drop. Let me, let me just like reiterate that. And then there will be a jewelry collection, and that was also very rare, numbered items that will go on sale on May 7th. That is on a Saturday. It will be early afternoon. Um, I don't anticipate that it's going to last very long. I think it probably sell out within, uh, very, it'd be very, very fast. It's not online, nothing like that, anything. Also, um, for those of you who like cars and want to, you know, check out a quick strike, you know, I feel like the pandemic has calmed down a lot. I can't say it's over because... Cases are coming back up in certain areas. LA County is about to um, put up the mask mandate again for Ubers and, and public transportation, shit like that. And, you know, I don't know, man, it's crazy. It's still, it's still out there. It is what it is. But my bad. PML Quick Strike is happening May 7th as well. It's going to be at nighttime. If you follow uh, at PML Quick Strike, they're going to announce the details today. So that's going to be lit. I am going to bring my Tesla. This will be the first time I'm not bringing an exotic car to a quick strike. But please believe I will be tapping all that ass. I want all the smoke in an electric car. No kizzy. But uh, speaking of electric cars, I was um, taking a flight up to San Francisco during 420. I just realized this now. Was it the first time or second? I forgot. Because you guys remember I had a fucking crazy situation where my kids, uh, well, Kaya was sick. So I had to fly back down to LA, pick up my kids, and then come back. So I don't remember if it was, no, I'm pretty sure it was the first time. But I met a girl who is, um, she works for Lucid. 
And if you guys are hip to the, you know, the car game, you guys follow all the shit. I wish I followed more car pages, like real auto shit, not like, you know, um, unofficial things, right? Like, not like Alex Choi or, or, you know, rest in peace, Savage Garage. I'm talking about like a real page that's posting everything from, you know, crossovers, SUVs, family cars, everything you can think of. But Lucid is the new luxury uh, electric car. And they won, I don't know if it's Road and Track, one of those big magazines, they won car of the year. And they came out the gate swinging like a motherfucker. This car is fucking gorgeous. It's got over a thousand horsepower. It's got over 500 mile range, a lot of stuff. I ain't gonna lie to you. Shit looks good as fuck. Uh, interior definitely looks much more impressive than a Tesla. So we will see. Um, I haven't ordered one yet. I, I keep thinking about it. I think I'm going to. I think I am going to. Um, also for you guys who follow the hobby, as it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, I guess my Mike Trout Web3, you know, um, NFT style Mike Trout cards is my final card of the collection. Obviously, I did not finish all 20, which is all good. But um, this is my actually one of my favorite cards. When I say my favorite, I think this is in my top three favorite cards I did out of any Project 20 or Project 70. I loved this card. Um, they finally dropped, but that's not the announcement I'm going to make. May 5th, evening time, not sure. On the East Coast, it'll be evening. West Coast, it'll be late afternoon, early evening. Baller Breaks is going to start. Baller Breaks is going to happen with Network. And uh, I do everything with Network. You know, I, I just love the Seamless app. And that, that is going to come into fruition. I've been thinking about doing breaks for a long time. We're going to do breaks. We're going to do this shit fucking fresh to death. And yeah, Baller Breaks is going to happen on May 5th, Thursday. Uh, we drop a podcast today, so I will push that again. Speaking of push, man, I tell you guys, man. Some punk ass frat boy, goofy, stupid motherfucking piece of shit pushed my boy Mike Tyson to the edge. And the thing is, Mike has gone through many years, I want to say over a decade of healing. He went through some karma changes. He went through certain things. You know, this dude is, I don't think you understand how badass this motherfucker was. Ain't no bad boy. Celebrity art, you know, fucking uh, rapper, fucking uh, athlete, that was as bad as Mike. Mike was a mean motherfucker, still is. You know, he lost his daughter through a horrible death. Um, he went through other things, went through other hardships. He's, he's faced adversity times 10, and um, he's a brilliant dude. And I don't say that just because I'm a huge fan of his. I say that because I've actually got to know the guy. And, you know, he's gone through, like, crazy spiritual healing and things. So he's just not the type of guy that wants to start a fight with anybody, but a lot of people like to start shit with them, fuck with them, you know, here and there. And a lot of people don't realize, you know, his reign as a professional boxer was way over before these people were even born. You know, these this guy is most of these dudes' parents' hero, right? So some dudes on a plane, as everyone's seen, has listened to this show, I'm sure you've seen it. Dude is fucking with him, throwing a water ball at him, fucking, you know, harassing him. He allegedly asked him for a picture. They were cool. They were cordial. Everything was fine. And then finally, there's just this entitled fucking cornball, goofy ass shit. And this dude just pushed Mike to the limit. And the crazy part was I was with Mike for two and a half hours prior to that. And he basically left, went to get some food, and then jumped on a fucking red eye to Florida from San Francisco. Okay. This man, Mike, was hitting every fucking crazy contraption there. He was fucking smoking the biggest doobies. He was fucking chilling, not starting shit with nobody, giving people hugs, handing out shrooms, handing out weed, just smiling, taking pictures, having a good time. He's like, yo, man, what's up, man? Long time no see. We didn't chop it up too much, you know, but it was cool just to kick it with Mike, get again, be in his presence. People were tripping. It was an awesome time. Um, I already talked about 420. This happened after I recorded the show because of all the fiasco shit that I do with my kids. But, you know, this dude went too far. And so Mike gave this dude a legit eight-piece family bucket chicken dinner with the biscuit, with the two sides, okay, and the diet soda hit this motherfucker. So come to find out, this dude has like eight previous fucking um, arrests. One is like armed robbery or some shit, all this other stuff. This dude hired a fucking lawyer. 
Now, I've already told you guys how I feel about lawyers and how I feel about getting sued and all this other shit. It's just real greaseball, stupid fucking cornball shit, you know? Um, at the end of the day, nobody wins. Only one who wins are the attorneys, you know? It's just like, there's good lawyers out there, for sure. Just saying, being in court is not fucking fun. But you know what was fun? Being back home in San Francisco with my kids in our place, chilling. I wish Kai and my wife could have been there. You know, we seized the day to the T. Like, we went at it. Like, at, we didn't spend much time in our place. We just, as soon as I picked the boys up, we were at it. You know, they got to fucking eat whatever they wanted. You know, we got snacks. My wife packed a bunch of snacks for them. We went to the movies. We went to the aquarium. We went to fucking Oracle Park um, where the Giants played. We went to the cable cars. We went on um, Fisherman's Wharf, went to Pier 39, went to go see the Sea Lions. Um, we went to go see a movie. Like, it was just crazy. You know, we, like, we, we went to, obviously, Dave & Buster's three nights in a row and just had a great time. Shout out to my boy Popeye. Um, Popeye's a fucking G. I don't think anybody reps Dave & Buster's harder than me. And I'm talking about somebody who has a platform, somebody who has at least a quarter million, half million followers and higher. You know, Chris Brown, Drake, and all them, they go, Bieber go, but they don't go like, I'm talking, I go heavy duty, and um, I'm into it, I got the app, you know what I'm saying, I'm fucking paying attention, I'm, I'm, you know, the kids have points now, you know, all the times we gone before, I really wish they had, but they understand it now, so like, London's up to like 15,000 points, Ryder's at 10,000 points, um, Kaya's still trying to get there, but, you know, what's crazy is, being in the Bay and being in Dan Buster's, I don't have no fuck shit. Now, the crazy part is Popeye makes sure I'm good over there. You know, they, these security guards have guns in Dame Busters. I don't know why, maybe because they serve alcohol, but it was nice. You know, they're watching the Warriors games, watching all the basketball games. We're in there chilling, just having a grand old time, legit. We get there usually around, like probably right around like eight o'clock. I let the kids stay up a little later. We play like two, three hours max, head back and they're knocked out. They're probably sleeping in the car you know, on the way back home. So, you know, it was kind of nice. Uh, I got to say this after really analyzing the Concord location is nice. But I realized because I play a lot in LA, you know, between three different locations that I go to, one of them in Santa Anita that I love. And it's like, there's like this nightclub upstairs. It's fucking sick. And um, it's a big place and it's, and it's nice. And I love the Santa Anita Mall. But, you know, San Francisco is, the Daily City place is low-key, a fucking super nice place. And they have a lot, have everything, a lot more shit than other places have. Definitely, obviously, much bigger than the Times Square location, but just fresh, fresh as fuck. And I just got that new black card. I can't wait to show you guys. Shit is lit as fuck. It is like I think they only gave ten people in the world Dave and Buster black cards. And what it is is it's literally a VIP card where you go eat with it. You you know you play video games, whatever. When your points get lower, the money gets low on the card, it refills. It's just an honor to be a part of that damn Buster brand. But um, I will say this. We have been to all the major aquariums up the coast. I haven't been in an aquarium in Florida or New York or anywhere else. I'm talking about from San Diego all the way up to fucking Seattle, right? We have been to all the aquariums. And obviously, Aquarium of the Pacific, Monterey Bay Aquarium, those are the two most famous you know, aquariums where they film the Dory shit, where they base those movies out of. San Francisco Aquarium is very small. It is quaint, but small. But the prices are no joke. San Francisco, for me and two boys, was like almost $80, right? This place, you could see this entire place legit. If there's nobody there, you're the first person there. We were the first customer there. You walk in and out of this place you could be in and out of there in 45 minutes. And that's looking at every single thing, reading all the shit and everything. And if you're at one of the bigger places, you could be there for a couple hours. Now, you could whiz through it. I could whiz through this thing in 20 minutes. So I just feel like, damn, that's a lot of money for, for an aquarium, right? But I will say this. They have an area, this tunnel, and of all the tunnels I've been through, you know, in Monterey or at fucking at Long Beach, this one is the most lit. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know if it's just because it's the Bay, whatever, the money, maybe they're funded by, you know, they're a nonprofit, but, and that's why they gotta be, the, the price gotta be kind of high. Their Shark Tank 
was one of the most impressive for sure. They had seven gill shark. They had fucking all kinds of stuff. It was lit. They had such an impressive as a thing called sharks of Alcatraz. And a lot of people don't know that there are sharks all through that fucking water right there between Alcatraz and, and um and the San Francisco uh, the wharf right there. But yeah, man, it was fucking lit. Uh, Fishman's Wharf has got cleaned up a little bit. There was definitely shit everywhere. There used to be homeless people everywhere. It's less and less. I think a lot of them are still on the Tenderloin and stuff. I didn't. We didn't go to the Tenderloin this time. Um, I wouldn't take my kids over there anyways unless I was going to Supreme. But you know, we had a really nice meal. Uh, the boys are starting to eat a little bit more, starting to get easier. Some of you who are new to the show don't know that my son London has very, very severe allergies. So he has not been able to eat very much. He's starting to open his palate up. And, um, you know, we could have some pasta, eat spaghetti and things like that. It's marinara. So I have, I have like a, a pomodoro, real mild shit. But Ryder is still on that shit. Like, and I'm going to get into that in a second. But able to have a nice meal. Went in to build the bear which I've never been into. And I realized Built the Bear is actually kind of cool. But again, it's just like you waste your money on the shit. The thing about it is we went to Target because we're heading to go see some movies. And um, one of my favorite movie theaters in the state of California is actually in San Francisco, right? Their IMAX theater, everything. And, you know, I go to this place often and definitely pre-pandemic and post-pandemic now. And we go in the Target and everything is behind locked doors. Dove fucking soap. Razor blades are usually always behind because they're, they're expensive and whatever. But like, and you know, baby formula usually is, but like sleeping bags, tents. And this is like a different type of target. It's like the city. It's like right there south of the market. And I'm like, what the fuck? Go in there. A bunch of, of the employees there are fans. Come to take pictures. And people are like, half the people are like, who the fuck is that dude? Another half are like, okay, why is there such a big commotion? So it's like, you know, I'm like kind of embarrassed. And um, anyways, you know, we go in there to buy Nerf guns because I wanted to fuck around and shoot Nerf guns. I thought about maybe that's not a smart thing. But if we do it around our place, it's fun, you know what I mean? And these Nerf guns are up to like 80 bucks now. And they hurt like a motherfucker, you know, but we got goggles because it's a swim pool in our place. But um, did that, whatever. And went to go see a movie. Went to go see the bad guys. Now, Usually, when I take my kids to go see a kid's movie, Nicolette is maybe on her phone, but she's probably, you know, she pays attention more than I do. But, like, we go to see a lot of kids' movies, right, before Kaya. And now that the kids are really into shit, they actually pay attention. And, you know, both my kids have very short attention spans, but they really love movies. They fucking love movies. Love Planet of the Apes. Love the Jurassic Park series. They cannot wait for this new Jurassic Park to drop this summer. So I went to go see a movie called The Bad Guys, Never heard of it. Had no idea what the fuck to expect. Ryder read the book. We watch it. I pay attention for a little bit. And I realize this movie is actually really fucking good. Okay, so if you, all you dads out there who didn't know what to do this week or this weekend, take your boys, take your kids to see the bad guys. It was a really, really good movie. And, you know, it was nice to see him in recliner chairs, have the reserved seating. I'm just not going to a fucking theater that doesn't have reserved seating anymore. And tell you the truth, I really have a hard time not being in reclining chairs and have my own snacks and all that. And um, while I was there, I met the owner of Soda Bowl. Now, Soda Bowl, S-O-R-A-B-O-L, is an old, famous Korean restaurant, but then it turned into a franchise, sort of like how, not necessarily Panda Express, but if you go to a lot of Westfield malls, you'll see Soda Bowl there, and it's cool. met this dude named Walter. He's the owner. He's from Piedmont. We started chopping it up, trying to give me a couple free meals. I'm good. I paid for my meals. It was straight, but it was dope. It was nice. I networked with a lot of random people. It just came to me, which is really, really cool. You know, um, this San Francisco trip was different. The boys were like, this is the best time we've had here. And they've been dozens of times, right? Going back to Ryder, we were going to eat at Dame Buster's and their food has gotten a lot better. Food is good now. Like they have like a, like a TGI Fridays type, you know, kitchen now. They had a lot of different menus, uh, options. But Ryder doesn't like their chicken nuggets. And that's all he eats. I think I've told you guys this, right? In the morning, he has his pancakes. He likes hash browns. He eats French fries. He eats chicken nuggets, chicken strips, chicken fingers. And he eats a special meat and rice that my mother-in-law makes. It's Piccadillo. It's a very special time. He doesn't eat nothing else. I'm talking about 365 days a year. It's not a game. 
So there was nothing to eat. We're at Saramani. There are no fucking options for him. There's a straight Filipino shit. There's like no, he don't eat pizza, nothing. Go to Jollibee. I fucking love Jollibee. You guys already know this. Most of you guys who do know. And there's a fucking line, like 17 people long. I'm like, God damn. And Jollibee always has a line, right? And I see when we get up to the fucking front of the line, it says chicken strips sold out. And I, I was just like, at that point, I lost it. So I'm telling Ryder, look, you got to eat this sandwich. I'm going to give it to you plain, no sauce, no nothing. And that's just, they can't do any of that. Ryder loves bread, loves sourdough bread, loves French roll bread, loves, like, it's just a soft bread, just loves it. It's like a snack of his. Um, by the way, he eats snacks, and there's certain snacks he likes. So I say, Ryder, I'm going to have you take a bite of this butter bread. It's delicious, like a little brioche bun, soft, eats it. He's like, mm, this is good. Get the chicken. I'm like, look, imagine one gigantic chicken nugget. Okay, take a bite of this. He takes, he goes, this is good, daddy. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, no shit. So I put five French fries because he loves French fries and fucking Jolly Bee's French fries are so bussin'. Them shits are lit. Like their French fries are good. Always hot, always fresh. You ain't gonna have no old fries in there. They, they, like McDonald's fries are great if they're fresh. If they sit around a little bit, they're just trash. These never sit around. You kind of eat. They're just, they, they stay hot for a while. So I put seven, eight French fries in the sandwich. I smash everything down so it's easy to bite. Takes a bite. He goes ape shit. He said, this is the best chicken sandwich ever. You know, blah, blah, whatever. I fucking love it. I'm going to try all the other chicken sandwiches, whatever. The crazy thing is we went to the mall in San Francisco. He tried Shake Shack and he hated the fucking chicken sandwich. He couldn't stand it. So it was terrible. I wouldn't even eat it. So there goes that. But Ryder loves Jolly Bee. I love Jolly Bee. Fuck. Can't wait for London to like Jolly Bee, even though he likes all these other things. So we can start traveling more because traveling is an issue because... She doesn't eat anything. Kaya, she eats damn near everything. So anyways, that was my, maybe a bad idea. I decided to get two orders of burger steak, which was a wrong idea. Extra fucking gravy. It was so fucking good. Had a stomach ache. Going to Dave & Buster's and I do the virtual reality game. I'm not good with virtual reality. Not really just a big deal. I, I'm not, that's not really my thing, you know? And um, we go into fucking Dave & Buster's they want to do it. I'm trying to like bullshit here and there. And like, you know, it's also you go in there, there's people touching the face, whatever, boom. Every single time they have to clean it. I'm just kind of like the thought of it is kind of already like, you know, I'm washing their hands, sanitizing it probably 20 times while they're there. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's go and do the virtual reality. They've always liked it. They've done it a couple of times with their uncle. We go on, we try the Terminator and it made me sick as fuck fuck it's sick it's fucking dope i think it's cool you know the whole the oculus they got one but like it gave me vertigo and it fucked me up the entire rest of the night i had to take a small little fucking you know motion sickness pill and uh calm down drink a lot of tea and was like yo this just fucked me up so i don't know about you guys maybe i'm just fucking old but it literally gave me vertigo it made me sick as shit i don't know if you guys have that same situation while you guys are doing like, you know, the virtual reality things, let me know. There's a ride at Universal Studios, the Simpsons ride's been forever. It's fun as shit, but that fucks me up every single time. So, uh, yo, we're going to take a break real quick. We got some commercials to pay some bills. Uh, why don't you listen to Lakey Lake and we'll be right back, y'all. Most probiotics don't work. If you've ever struggled to find a good brand, here's why. To be truly effective, a probiotic must survive the trip from your mouth to your gut. The majority of probiotics, even the special refrigerated ones, die in your harsh stomach acid well before they get to where they're needed. That's why I'm a fan of Just Thrive Probiotic. Their exclusive strains are designed by nature to put up an armor-like shell when conditions get rough. In fact, studies have proven that Just Thrive Probiotic arrives 100% alive in your gut and ready to go to work. That's what makes them so uniquely effective at controlling gas, constipation, and bloating, and providing much needed immune support. Their vegan, non-GMO, gluten, dairy, and soy-free formula can even support beautiful skin, better sleep, and easier weight management. For exceptional health, there's nothing like the award-winning Just 
Thrive Probiotic. Thousands of customers can't be wrong. Make this your year. Support your immune health with Just Thrive. Get 15% off when you go to justthrivehealth.com and use code BALLER at checkout. It's www.justthrivehealth.com. Make sure you use code BALLER at checkout. How did you choose which internet service provider to use? The sad thing is most of us have very little choice because ISPs operate like monopolies in the regions they serve for people like us. They use this power to take advantage of customers. But worst of all, many ISPs log your internet activity and then sell that data to other big tech companies and advertisers. To prevent ISPs from seeing my internet activity, I protect all my devices with ExpressVPN. So what is ExpressVPN? It's a simple app for your computer or your smartphone that encrypts all your network data and tunnels it through a secure VPN server so that your ISP cannot be seen at all or any of your activity. Just think about how much of your life is on the internet. Sadly, the list of people you've messaged, sites you've visited, and videos you've watched get tracked by tech giants who can sell your information for profit. That's the reason I recommend ExpressVPN as the best way to hide your online activity from your ISP. You just download the app, tap one button on your device, boom, you're protected. You can imagine how much I do on my phone and who I am talking to, so I have to be protected. ExpressVPN does all of this without slowing your connection. That's why it's rated the number one VPN service by Business Insider and The Verge. Protect yourself with the VPN I trust to keep me private online. Visit expressvpn.com slash baller. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash baller to get three extra months for free. Go to expressvpn.com slash baller right now to learn more. Yo, yo, we're back, man. I wanted to say real quick, uh, we were supposed to drop our Master Dynamic super high-end Bentley Rolls-Royce Maybach Ferrari of headphone headsets um, with Master Dynamic. Um, I, I don't know, man, there's some issues with shipping from China, so I'm kind of bummed out because I'm filming the gaming part of it live with Ron Artest, a.k.a. Meta World Peace, in the Million Dollar Man Cave. So, you know, um, I don't know, man. Uh, it bums me out when I push back stuff, because, you know what I mean, I, we have some really fucking amazing collaborations coming up. Um, one that I don't remember if I did mention to you guys, but I have a official MLB official, meaning on-field official Rawlings baseball glove that I cannot wait to show you guys. But I um, just wanted to make that announcement real quick so you guys understood this week. I got that private event, and then I have the babe drop officially on the 7th. I got the baller breaks on the 5th. Just want to reiterate that real quick. But I want to talk about something. Usually we talk about entertainment, sports, in the second half of shows, right? On the Monday, we can wrap up. But I, I just want to talk about, like, fights, right? Whether you fight with a spouse, a friend, or anybody else. You know, fights can be real interesting, right? You can easily misunderstand somebody, you know, egos get involved, um, you, you realize you're wrong, and then that you, you've gone too far now with how upset you got. Some people think that silence is the best answer. I don't always agree with that. I don't care what anyone else says. Some people try to be on some Gandhi shit, like, you know, boom, I don't want to say anything I regret, but I get that part. But sometimes it's best that you do let people know where you stand especially if you care about them. Whether how mad you are, I really feel like that mad just should come out because you under, you let the person know how upset you were. If you forget about the next day, like, you know, I was tripping, whatever, boom, that's how I feel. I feel like you holding it back or you just being fake. Let me just be quiet. Let me just not say anything until I know what's going on. Yeah, I get that. Motherfucker, this ain't Encyclopedia Brown. You ain't no detective. And I just showed my age there because a lot of people don't even know what the fuck Encyclopedia Brown is. But just because you fight it don't mean it's the end of the world. And, and I see people fight bad. 
whether it be infidelity, be, you know, domestic violence, those are two things I feel like are kind of out the window. That right there, that's a wrap. You know, people who heal and come back from that because of maybe kids are involved and stuff, hey, God bless them. More so that maybe the cheating part, but domestic violence, nah, man, no. That's just no. And it goes both ways. I've seen, you know, we had, um, we had a pro NFL player on this show who I just realized was a victim of domestic violence. This dude is fucking 300 fucking 60 pounds. And I'm thinking like, yo. And this chick was a big chick too. I ain't gonna lie to you. And like, thought about it. Like, yo, man, it's just like, being in an abusive relationship is never a good thing. But now I'm talking about in between arguments, small petty shit. Someone moved the fucking remote somewhere. Someone lost the keys. And now all of a sudden it's like, all right, it's time to break up. It's time for divorce. No, 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 look, man. If you're with somebody where any fight can be the end of the world with them, yo, it's time to walk away. That's Ben Baller's advice for any relationship, platonic, friends, you know, lovers. If you're walking on eggshells, get the fuck out of the relationship. You know, it's cool sometimes, like, oh, someone's dad just died, you know, let me chill out, boom. But if it's like constantly and it's a habit of something, nah, man, go, leave. Don't live your life on filters, man. You know what I mean? When I say filters, I'm talking about, I mean like boundaries and things like that. Like there are boundaries in, in marriage and in relationships and serious stuff, you know? And I feel like some people have different opinions than I do. I feel like I don't need a piece of paper. And, no, no, there's a lot of things. You go through hell for a divorce. You go through hell for a marriage. There's a lot of paperwork and things because you want to make sure it's right. Some people get married seven times. People get married once, married twice. I'm not trying to get married a second time. You know, I highly doubt since, but God forbid, you know, something happened down the line or something where me and Nicolette couldn't come to an agreement. I'm not getting fucking married. And so people say, oh, you know, never say never. I'm just saying, like, it's just, you know, it's, I'm, I'm at a different place in my life. I'm, I'm old as shit. Forgot who the fuck just announced they're having a kid. Oh, I think Nicholas Cage, right? And he's like, what, 56 or 55, 54, something. It was crazy. Um, I just wanted to say, though, just because you get in a fight with someone, does not mean it's the end of the fucking world. It could be a big fight too. People cool down. People know each other. I've been in, in a fight currently with my cousin and we haven't spoke in 18 fucking years. And it's sad because my uncle passed away in 2014. I didn't know about it. There's all kinds of weird friction going on. And one of my boys just got out of jail. If you saw the movie Cake, then you see the movies about me, my cousin, and a homie. And it was based on a true story. A lot of people are like, oh, this is great. No, this is... This was shit that we were doing, you know? We were really doing it. The only part that was bullshit was getting in a shootout with the cartel. That was the only part that was fiction, okay? The rest of it was pretty much on point. And my boy's like, yo, dog, you know, he's been gone so long. He's been gone since 08. And he just got out late last year. And he said, you should talk to your cousin, man, you know? And it's, I'm ready to talk to him. But, you know, the funny thing is, and this is with, you know, people I started following recently on Twitter, people who listen to the show and certain stuff, like, I talk, you know, a lot on the show. I talk a lot to my family. I talk a lot to my close friends. You know, I tweet here and there. But for the most part, I'm not really the most talkative person to somebody I don't know. I try to be nice and talk, you know, here and there. And I think some people have the wrong idea, and I know they do. And um, it's still tied to the NFT thing, which is kind of weird as well right? And I don't know where, we're really in limbo right now. And um, I do want to find a resolution to this because my schedule is getting crazier and crazier. And we got VCon coming up next month. And um, I sleep well at night, guys, just so you know. If something was bothering me to a certain point to where I feel like, oh man, I, made, I need to make this right, boom. No. I want to make things better for the project, but there's some things that are blocking me from doing that. But again, I don't have any enemies. I don't hate anyone, you know. Might despise somebody like 6 9 because of the behavior and certain things these people do and whatever and a lot of internet shit that just I don't agree with. And that's a, another reason why I have a set number. I could retire today. That'd be nice. But I do think in the back of my head, I just want to take care of everybody. So there's a set number. It's not too crazy. I could reach it in three years, I think. It could take people a lifetime to get there. 
Um, if I get there in five, then yeah, I'm done. I'm either going to post the most stupidest shit, like a piece of paper on, on, you know, that has a middle finger on there on Instagram, or I'm just really not really don't care. Twitter's the only thing I really care about, really. You know, the Instagram thing is about money. So, anyways, um, NBA playoffs are getting spicy than a motherfucker right now, okay? For the most part, since we last spoke, the only thing I was really wrong about was Phoenix. I did not expect the Pelicans to go, you know, and even the series up. And now that they have, I don't know about Phoenix being that team, you know what I mean? Like, they're not showing me that they flourished and, and you know, they're developing the way that Boston is. Because Boston is scary as a motherfucker, all right? Now, I don't know anything about the Milwaukee Chicago shit. I'm really not paying attention to that series. And I just don't like Milwaukee, so I'm kind of bummed out that they're leading 3-1. to one. But I did think Philly was going to sweep Toronto. I think they're just going to end it now. They ain't fucking Toronto. Ain't coming. I'm not trying to hear all that bullshit. Fuck out of here. Um, I am surprised that Miami got one. I mean, uh, Atlanta got one out of Miami. Um, they went home. It was a weird situation. If you guys saw that there was a fucking suspicious package, they thought it was a bomb. They didn't know what the fuck it was. Miami's going to take that. Philly's going to take it. Looks like Milwaukee's going to take it. Now, Boston and Brooklyn, I'm just a little dumbfounded. Kyrie is playing amazing. I just don't understand the thing with, with KD and what the fuck. What if Kyrie wasn't there because this vaccine shit was still going? I don't know. But one thing I have not spoken about throughout this whole time is a friend of mine who's Ben Simmons. I haven't reached out to Ben at all. I talked to him right before the playoffs. I talked to him right before he signed with, with Brooklyn. Ben is a just a chill dude. You know, um, very talented. Still think he's a top 10 point guard in the NBA. Good looking dude. Makes a lot of money. You know, he, he's playing on great teams. He's a good basketball player. He's dated some of the baddest bitches. I think, you know, maybe some of this entitlement's coming in, but like the stuff that Stephen A and Kendra Perkins, these guys are going at, I can't go there because he's my boy. And I'm not saying be like, oh, you know, you know what, you should be able to call your friends out. We ain't that close. But I'm starting to get confused on why dude didn't come back for, you know, game three. And he's not going to come back for game four. So I'm kind of like, you know, people are joking, like, yo, come back for game eight. I, look, look, dog, that's it. And I think he could have been the difference. I truly do think if he jumped in in game two, you know what I mean? They would have won that game because they barely lost game one, right? Then game three is kind of like, I don't know, but he could have made a difference. It'd just be crazy if he doesn't play at all. And it'd be a motherfucking shame. At, the, at one point, I was like, yo, it's impossible. Brooklyn's not getting sweeped. I'll be honest with you. I thought Philly was going to sweep Toronto way more. I agree with that. I was like, I would have put my money on that before putting my money on this. Now, the money is, yeah, dog, Boston's going to fuck around and sweep them. Dallas and Utah series I don't give a fuck about. Those are two teams that are just completely wasting their time. Neither one of those teams are doing to do shit. Fuck them. Whoever wins from that is going to lose to fucking Phoenix anywhere, fucking the, the Pelicans, whatever it is. Golden State, Denver is a sad shit just because Murray's still out. You know, it's been out since the pandemic, I mean, since the, the bubble. But like, it's just weird. And I knew that Denver get one, but Golden State's definitely playing too strong. I think they fuck around and come out, you know, but if Golden State ends up playing, I'm going to keep it a buck. I think whoever wins this Memphis-Minnesota series is going to take Golden State seven games and probably win, all right? And I told you already how much I love Minnesota. I really think they're, the, they're my sleeper, you know? I had Phoenix coming out of the West undisputed. Now, I don't really know. Golden State is definitely very tough, and they fuck around, and they're playing great ball. There are some wishful thinking about trading Russ uh, Westbrook to Brooklyn for Kyrie so that Russ could join fucking KD again and fucking Kyrie could join LeBron. I, I can't see that happening. It'd just be fucking hilarious. But the playoffs have been interesting. Let's wait till we get to conference finals. Semis, you know, mm, but we got to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? Because the captain's picks are making motherfuckers money. Baseball is cracking right now. That Tyson Fury fight was fucking, just, it was, I already knew he was going to fuck his ass up. Um, Tyson Fury is my favorite fucking boxer right now. It's fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, man. You know what? A friend of mine, Trayvon, made a documentary on Jeremy Lin. It's not the petty in me 
it's more of me keeping it real and saying this. I don't fuck with Jeremy Lin. I, I was a huge fan of that dude from that one game. And again, I paid attention to that season. He had a good season. Knicks fans love the dude. You know what I mean? Yes, he showed out in Kobe that one game. Boom. Let's keep it 100. Let's keep it 1,000. Let's keep it hand on the Bible. Jeremy Lin's career has been mid. His entire NBA career has been mid. His argument about him going off in the G League, that he deserves a chance back in the NBA, is cap. And when I say cap, I mean cap, and I also mean Kaepernick. It's the same. The motherfucker is not NBA quality. All right, I'm going to say this. Top of that, dude is a fucking, fucking asshole in person. He's not, he's all that fake Asian shit on the cause. Oh, you play basketball, so you play with a bunch of black dudes who all make millions of dollars, so you know what it's like? How many of them dudes you kicking it with? None. Just keep it 100. You definitely kick with a lot of Asian people. I know you kick it with all the YouTube, the fucking, um, the fuck are those dudes' names, man? The fucking, um, fuck, Ryan Higa and other guys, whatever. Cool. Look, dog. When you're speaking up on the Stop Asian Hate, all this stuff, it's great. You're bringing awareness to it. But, bro, it's all cap because you ain't in the street. You ain't talking to other people. You ain't dealing with none of that shit. You ain't talking to the other NBA players. You're not bringing none of that fucking, you know, awareness to them. You know what I'm saying? And I gave dude the benefit of the doubt after I helped, you know, well, no one knew I helped. But when Masai, the president of the Toronto Raptors, got into the fight with the fucking sheriff at fucking Oracle Arena and I had the video... And then I went and had to fucking go and talk to the newspapers and then have to testify or at least submit my info and then basically do the interview on the phone. I cleared his name. I walked over, saw Laurie. I said, yo, Jeremy, man, congrats. You know, the funny thing is he didn't participate in one fucking minute of play for that entire finals. I think he got like four, and someone's going to Google it, I'm sure. You can Google it find out how much he played that season. Was that three years ago? Whatever. This motherfucker was inviting, like, he was proud. He was like, let me get my mom out of here. Hey, mom, come over here. Come over here. When they're doing, like, you know, the ring ceremony, or not the ring ceremony, but, you know, the, the ribbon cutting. They just won the chip. Like, bro, you participated in practice, maybe. But, dog, you out there, you a cheerleader, bro. You didn't play at all. People are like, oh, well, Ben, you didn't play. I didn't say I did. I ain't out there like, yo, bro, if I didn't play a fucking minute, I sat on the bench for the entire fucking six games of that series, bro, dog, come on, man. It was crazy. I was like, I was showing love. I was like, yo, bro, what's good, man? Congrats. He looked at me dead in the face. He knows who I am, right? We have three or four close mutual friends. And he was like, all right, cool. Just goes to me. And I was like, all right, cool, dog. You know what, man? I'm just going to stay sunning you. Like how fucking George Lopez, son, Eric Estrada, Bro, it's, it's fucking hilarious, man. It's just crazy. And they made this fucking documentary. Off the, and the crazy thing is, Trayvon is a good dude. He's a very, very brilliant dude, right? Won an Academy Award. But Jeremy Lin? Nah, dog. I can't rock with dude. Fuck that documentary. It's corny as shit. I'm, uh, great, dog. He's fun to bury you. And he fucking, you know, he went to Harvard University. Dog, you're going to stay in China or wherever the fuck you're playing. I'm just, you know, super religious too. That throws me off right there when you're super like, when you're super into that. Just weird, bro. It's all cap. And, you know, I don't know, bro. Like, it's great. He had 38 points at the fucking garden. You know, it, it was it a great time. Dog, you ain't did shit other than that. So people are like, oh, man, Ben, you a fucking hater. You know what? In fact, let me double down on this shit. I posted Ichiro. And this meme said that Ichiro learned how to speak Spanish so he could talk shit to other people. I knew, I knew I was going to get some little petty ass, bitch ass Korean motherfuckers like, yo, you know what he said? I want to beat South Korea so bad that they don't want to play in this thing for 30 years. And da, 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 da. Do you know anyone who understands, if you're Korean or you're Japanese, there has been a long standing battle between Korea and Japan for decades any motherfucker entertaining that ancient ass beef are the type of people i'm sorry are the type of russians that back putin you back putin you back in beef like that 
bro, we progressive over here, right? And I don't mean progressive on some Democrat shit. I mean progressive like in some like, we got progressive thinking. We're thinking forward. Ain't nobody thinking about no motherfucking South Korea shit, whatever. I've hung out with each other. I did a fucking private autograph signing with this dude. Dude is fully aware. There's Korea patches on my fucking back and everything else. Dude was super respectful, mad love. It's a fucking funny ass meme. Some of you motherfuckers need to ease up and chill out. Stop putting race into it. Stop, oh, disrespect. No, no, dog. He's competitive. He was talking shit. Maybe there's some other part of it, but you know what, dog? It was fucking 13 years ago or even longer. Get the fuck over it. Now, Tokyo Vice, Ansel Elgort show. It is getting fucking good. Like, it is getting spicy as fuck, too. That shit simmered the fuck up and is really getting to where I want it to get to. Cannot wait. I think they dropped new episodes on Thursday or something. I don't know exactly, but yo, there's seven episodes right now and Tokyo Vice is my shit right now. Um, I just bought Jackass Forever. Haven't finally watched it yet and I'm going to probably today or tomorrow sometime. But there's a documentary on Hulu about something I had no idea about about a guy named Steven Stainer. S-T-A-Y-N-E-R, Stephen Stainer. The series, very, very convoluted. It took me a minute to really digest everything and kind of watch. I watched two episodes. There's one episode left. This is a fucked up situation. This is a story about a kid at seven years of age in 1972 who was kidnapped in Merced, California. I had a fucking meet and greet in Merced. I went around that entire city. Imagine... For those of you who live in Northern California or kind of know where Merced is, 1972, it's barely TVs, it's like no kind of anything. Just think about how you communicate. There's posters everywhere. This kid was kidnapped at seven years of age and came back home when he was 14. Seven years later, in 1979, he came back home. This is one of the most craziest fucking stories I've ever heard. Can't believe I didn't hear about it before. Definitely recommend watching it. It's fucking nuts. That is it though, guys. It is a uh, a nice, even podcast episode today. I'm not feeling so good. I powered through this. Oh yeah, fuck Jeremy Lin again if I forgot to mention that. But yeah, man, I want everyone to have a great week. Um, back Thursday. Got some interviews coming up again. I want to talk about that been testing video out just trying to get some things going i am excited for that even the solo videos i'm excited for i can't wait to tell you the idea we have for the guest videos but guys please subscribe tell other people to subscribe you know keep the downloads coming we don't mind paying the download fees and um you already know korean liam neeson i love you guys i will see you guys on thursday all right yo miles you already know the deal hit me with that lakey lake and yo we are out of here peace